Hello everyone, my name is Jose Cruz and I will continue talking about the theme of speech recognition. Now this video will consist of giving you a tutorial on how to come up with the implementation of the Ford algorithm which solves the problem of evaluation for hidden Markov models. So what is the issue? When you use hidden Markov models, three main problems arise. Evaluation, traversal, and training. So this video will focus on the first problem, which is evaluation. Now for this evaluation problem, there is a lot of computations that occur in the background that's why it is called hidden Markov model the hidden computations are consist of transition probabilities observation probabilities and alpha values now the tricky part about this is that as the number of states increase and the number of observations in a sequence increase the total number of possible state sequences sequences increase by a lot so much that it will become impossible to calculate so that is why we need a a programming um, implementation to resolve this issue so we use the forward algorithm and in this video we will implement it using Java. Now, hidden Markov models are are very are like the foundation of what speech recognition relies on. So that is why understanding and how to solve these hidden Markov model issues is very important. And that's why in this video we will tackle one of those three issues. So how are we gonna implement this? So first off, you will need access to terminal, which we will compile Java files, and we will edit them using Nano. In addition, we will also use a calculator to check with math calculations on the side, just to make sure that our programming is precise. And down here, I also have an explanation of the three. Oh, it says so. Also, this implementation will consist of three main parts, which is initialization, induction, and termination. Now, the initialization will include setting up our variables and also creating arrays for us to store our alpha values that we will come up with in each iteration. Induction is the iter like the iterative part well, where we will recursively call previous alpha values in order to um, compute the new ones. And termination will just consist of adding up the, the last iteration of alpha values and that will give you the probability of a specific sequence occurring given, a, given the model. For the initial prompt, I would go ahead and ask the user to enter a, whatever a amount of elements that they would like for their observation sequence. The os observation sequence will either, will only consist of elements type zero and one, Zero will represent happy and one will represent sad. So what I mean by that is for my little example that I'm displaying here for my project, I went ahead and just tried to make it as simple as possible. So the whole basis of this little example will be so if the person was, their mood was happy or sad, we can determine whether the day was sunny or cloudy using probabilities and these same this big pic this whole big picture could also be 
converted back to speech recognition and instead of comparing like the mood it could actually be uh, different um, elements so it could be like utterances and stuff that relates to speech now I also go ahead and check to see if the user entered at least seven elements and the reason for that is just to see I try to have the user enter a lot of elements so they can see all the different alpha values being computed now you don't have to add this section of this is not required for the evaluation part of the hidden Markov model but I went ahead and entered this just to keep it a little user friendly so they could kind of see all these cool uh, multiplication and all these different values being computed and this is all saved the number of observations is saved into variable n int n now so right here it says check to see if user entered at least seven elements and we go ahead and check that and then we ask the user again if if they want to continue with insufficient amount of elements you can go ahead and continue with one element it doesn't really matter you just have to enter one for yes, zero for no. And after you does that check, it goes and asks you for the, enter the number oh, over here. It says, now enter the elements, um, either zeros and ones to represent happy or sad. So we can go ahead, I can show you what it would look like right now. As you will be entering an observation sequence, enter the number of elements that you plan to enter in the vector. Let's do four. Attention, you chose to enter a sequence of four elements. Would you like to continue with four? So that is why I had a check. So if you were to put zero for no, no, I don't want to continue with four. Now enter the right amount of elements, seven. See, it says now enter seven happy or, or sad observations. One at a time, zero represent happy and one represent sad. So you can go ahead and put zero happy, zero happy, one sad, one sad, one sad, one sad. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, two, three, four, five, six, one more, seven. Boom, it doesn't matter. But we don't care about that right now. So let's go back to the code. So in order to explain this a little better, without using the seven element observation sequence that I entered. Let's say we are going to enter a four element observation sequence, which consists of zero, zero, one, one, which is happy, happy, sad, sad. So with that, we will be able to compute the probabilis probability that that specific sequence occurs given the specific model. So our observation sequence is happy, happy, sad, sad. Now, for, our, for the first part, initialization, we will need to store the first two alpha values into the first two indices, which is 0, 0, and then 0, 1. Now, how do we compute this uh, initialization alpha values with what? So this is a formula, initialization. The alpha value of the current state is the pi probability of that state times the observation probability of that state given the observation value or yes so what that means is pi probability of state let's do the first one alpha value of zero zero which is the first very first alpha value that is computed by the pi the pi array probability value which we stored in our pi array which is one comma zero. So we are multiplying the one times the observation probability of our 
given the first observations, which are, which our first observation element was happy. So knowing that it's happy, happy is a value of what? Zero. So, so since it's a value of zero, it is observation probability zero, zero, which is 0.7. So we're multiplying this one times the 0.7 and storing that into our alpha value array. Now the same thing will happen to alpha value for the next one that corresponds to the first element, ha the first happy, and that is also computed by the pi array value, but this case instead of one we are using the other value, zero, and we are doing the same with the same observation, so we're still doing the first happy, but instead of zero, we're doing one. So this will be the 0.3. So 0.3 is being multiplied times 0 0.0, which is gonna give us a zero. So we have these two first values and I go ahead and print the values. So uh, this induction part is the recursive part. So now that we have the very first two alpha values of the first element, so remember, we have two alpha values for each observation element. In this sequence, we have four observation elements. So therefore, we should be computing eight different alpha values. So we have two. We still have six to go. So now that we have finished the first element, we go ahead and time index plus plus, which this holds what element we're looking at. So now we're going to be looking at element number two, which is our second happy. Remember we said happy, happy, sad, sad. So now we are on the second happy. And I went ahead and added some other um, variables so that we can hold values while we do the computations. So I have a product one, product two, a sum one, and a sum two. So I go ahead and let the user know this is an induction part. And so how do we ca calculate the alpha values in the induction part recursively? So it is similar to the top one, but instead of using the pi probability, pi probability or only corresponds to initialization. When it comes to induction, we don't care about pi probability. We still care about the observation probability given the observation element times this good old stuff and what do we put in here we're actually using the previous alpha values from the last element to multiply with our op observation probabilities so how does that look so remember we said each element has two alpha values so we that's why i have a sum one and a sum two because those sums will be alpha value 1 and alpha value 2 of that specific element. Now, to compute it, we do product 1, because there's two products being two product values occurring for each multiplication computation. So, for example, we call the last alpha value and we are going to multiply it times which alpha value? The first one of the two. And multiply it times the transition probability, which is right here. So transition probability is A. So we're going to do two sets of those right here. We have product. So see how we have two sets? Alpha we're multiplying two times but different values it says product one is calculated by multiplying previous alpha value let me make this a little larger it says product one is calculated by multiplying previous alpha value corresponding to state one by transition probability one comma one so one comma one is this value Oh no, yeah, that value. And then I go ahead and print the, the product one value so you can go ahead and see. 
which is inside of here. See, so we have A, this is transition probability, times alpha value, and then that will be multiplied, will be added together, those two different um, sets, added together, giving us a sum, multiplying that sum times the observation probability given the element value and then that will give you one alpha value and we need two alpha values per element so we do this process again so that's why we need two sum values some one and some two see and then we go ahead and where is it we go ahead and clear prod one, prod two, because we're going to reuse product one, product two for the second alpha value that we're computing for our element, observation element. And we just have to make sure we put the correct corresponding indices because we don't want to use the wrong ones while computing since this is a recursive algorithm. And then once you find the second alpha value you just go ahead and put them in their corresponding alpha value um, location in the array so here make sure you adjust this correctly and then I go ahead and print the new alpha value 1 and 2 so you can go ahead and see that and then you just increase the time index which is our observation element in our sequence so now that we finished our second happy we would go ahead and now look at our third element which is sad our first sad in the sequence so now that we updated this we would go back up here and redo this whole process of multiplying the transition probability times the alpha value previous alpha value and then the other transition probability times the other alpha value add those two sums or add those two products up and then multiply it times your observation probability given the observation element all the way until you get to the very last element so once you get to the fourth element in this case it'll take you to termination so what do you do in termination you go back an, a number because I, I updated here to five, so you would be like, wait, we don't have five elements, so that's why I went back to four. And now it says, in termination, all it really is is just adding the alpha values of the last element. So that is where we just call the alpha value at the last index and then the alpha value these are both alpha values at the last index of for the, the corresponding last element so that's why there's two you add those up and it's going to give you after using the forward algorithm I forgot that I'm right here after of course after using the forward algorithm the probability of the observation sequence given lambda which is our model termination and then I give you the percentage and it's and then I ask the user this is where we ask user if they want to continue with to test with different observations and that is why I have the start value because it'll start you off again by entering one or zero to terminate and zero if it's if starts not one then that means you want to terminate and it'll end so let's do a test run and see how this results. So remember to compile, you would just do create the file right here, the dot class. And now you just You just to run you just Java and the name of the file minus forward it says enter the number of elements that you plan to enter in vector number four happy happy sad sad 
So, would you like to enter four? Yes. Now enter four happy or sad. Zero for happy. Zero happy. One sad. One sad. Boom. So let's look at what happens. The input, so remember how we said the first one was 0.7 and the other one zeroes out because it's zero times 0.3. So there we go. The first alpha values. And induction. So this is where we start doing the computation part for the remaining elements. So prod one is calculated by multiplying previous alpha value corresponding to state one by transition probability. So remember we said that the thing that the computation relied on alpha previous alpha value of that state times the transition probability and then you can have another alpha value times that transition probability add those two products up multiply times the observation probability given the observation element so that is being done there see multiplying the sum by observation probability corresponding to its current t element and that gives you this value so someone and this sum two are going to be the new alpha values and then once we have those we're going to use those values when computing the product one product two product one product two and so on and so on and then it says after using the forward algorithm if you notice if you add these two up you will actually get this value which is how termination works it adds the last two alpha values of the last element together and then observation finished would you like to enter a new observation so with this little example that I have showed you I have hopefully explain how it works recursively how these values are computed and hopefully you will be able to use this intuition to work on assignments related to speech recognition so instead of using happy and sad and sunny and cloudy it would rely more on like utterances words like in speech so like trying to predict correctly what word you were trying to say and not some random word so there's like words that would come after um, a certain word by a higher percentage than others so that's how we how hidden markov models work now this solves the first problem evaluation and let's just make sure that that um you are able to understand this and then modify it a little so it works as a backward algorithm instead of the forward algorithm and then you will be able to come up with the solution for the third problem of the hitter markov model which is training and what training is is just fixing those parameters in order to optimize your model and have better calculations and results. So an overview, the Java implementation of the forward, so this will be a implementation of the forward algorithm in Java. Now, and also, if you were to tweak this code in a way that it works backwards, you would essentially be addressing the traversal part so once you figure out the forward algorithm and the backward algorithm implementation you will be able to solve the third part of hidden markov models issues which has to do with training so with those two you will be able to optimize the parameters within the hidden Markov model.